hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. And I hope you've subscribed as well or I'll be coming to pay you a visit. <laughs> I'm Peter Fury and uh, don't forget to subscribe to Porky's Corner because I've been a helmet of the month and you need to listen to me. <laughs> yeah? So follow him, yeah? And get the fella some followers up for Christ's sake. He wears his hat on his sleeve, the good man was. So follow Porky's Corner, he says it as it is and uh, you know, I appreciate the helmet of the month, Russ. <laughs> no problem. No problem, thank you very much. You're welcome. Mate. The bomber tattooed on his back is of course a reference to his potent punch power and not in any way insensitive to the tragedy which unfolded in this arena when Ariana Grande performed Manchester will never forget. Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here and still the voice of hardcore boxing. Uh, I think we'll do a balls deep today. I'm going to give uh, my pal Big V a ring. He's from uh, the Midlands, somewhere down there. Brummy. He's a Brummy lad. So we'll give him a ring, and uh, we'll see what he's. Uh, we'll see what Big V's uh, up to. Let's have a look. What will that start as in my phone? Well, oh, B in it. B. Here we are, Big V. Hello there, how are you doing Big V? I'm alright mate, how are you Russ? I'm alright, what are you on with? I'm uh, just, just speaking breakfast at the moment, so you know, to sort of like get ready for the day. Yeah. I'm alright mate, alright, I've been here a couple of hours mate, so yeah I'm okay. Right, uh, hey, first of all, right, I know you're a boxing fan, but how long uh, have you been a boxing fan? Eleven years. Obviously, I think Yeah. The first proper like real glimpse of like a proper like boxing match. Also, I remember the Tyson Fury and John McDermott one, the first one. Yeah. About eleven years, so yeah. A lot of people said that John Fury, sorry, that John McDermott beat Tyson Fury in that fight, didn't they? Okay, are you a hardcore or a casual? I'm a hardcore, I'm a casual. Oh, I'll let you decide that one, mate. All right, well, what it is, we don't, yeah, we don't uh, discriminate on here. If people are boxing fans, they can, well, we can come on and they can build themselves up to being an hardcore. I ain't got no time for casuals, but if they want to cross the street, just like fighters cross the street to, uh, to Eddie yeah. Earn from Frank Warren, don't they? People cross the street and they want to change. So if you want to join the resistance, we're here. <laughs> so, all right then, we'll, we'll go balls deep then with Big Viv. So here goes. What do you think about the current state of UK of the UK boxing scene, Big Viv? Over to you. I think it's a joke, a little picture of you, mate. Um, it reminds in some ways, mate. It reminds me of sort of me being 10 years old again. story yesterday I spoke to somebody who's uh, who knows somebody who knows somebody and this person said to me uh, John Fury and Mickey Theo are not going to fight I says why 
and he told me and I said well fair enough I'm not going to put the reasons why I don't know a few little bits and bobs but I just put it out there that they're not going to fight now I've come in this morning and there's 7,200 views on it now over the last month any video I've done over the first 21 hours 22 hours none of them have gone above 10% of that so we've got two men 50 odd year old doing 10 times the views that I do with hardcore lads that want to talk about proper boxing situations and scenarios and yet we've got yeah. that circus doing 10 times the views I mean what is going on? Yeah. So what you get is people just follow hype, unfortunately, so obviously because of obviously this COVID-19 business going on and people being on lockdown, you know, obviously there's not much going on. So obviously you've got two 50, 50 year old guys, you know, sending video after video after video. And obviously people, because there's no entertainment now, people are just following that. Um, I feel like, like I said, it's just casual, mate. Everybody, not I say everybody, but I say most of the boxing scene these days, it's really casual based. So no one's interested in like, you know, 50, genuinely 50, 50 fights. It's all about hyping it up on social media, you know, getting everybody excited, putting a stun on it, and you know, it's, it's, it's ridiculous, mate. Right? You know, where the actual, you know, the realness in boxing now, I think it's gone, mate. Right? It's like totally gone. Yeah, I agree with that as well. I, I agree with that. Anyway, moving on. Who, who, who would you say is the greatest heavyweight of all time greatest heavyweight of all time for me that's a hard one well, it's not a hard one really is it in my I'd say Muhammad Ali yeah um, yeah I'd say because just just natural ability mate footwork speed get a great chin took some massive shots his ring IQ he's obviously inside and outside the ring sharp tongue just an entertaining man and also his ability to inspire people around the world. Um, also, can I, just, can I just slot in there, mate? I think the most underappreciated heavyweight, I think is a massive, like, great, is Lennox Lewis. I think he's underappreciated so much. I think he's a complete heavyweight, in my opinion. Just the way he, um, how he could, like, adapt to his opponents, obviously, with the loss that he has with over McCall and that, he obviously events that. Um, so for me, he goes number two. Uh, in my opinion, Lennox Lewis, uh, I don't think he were an Ali, but I think he were best of his era, but there's always going to be a question mark against Lennox Lewis, in my opinion, because the Riddick Bowden fight never happened. Um, yeah, 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 he beat everybody that he fought, so we can't knock that, but the yeah. Riddick Bow fight, for me, that was the only, and, and I think they were both a little bit weary of each other, that's what I think anyway. think is the best heavyweight in the UK today? Best heavyweight in the UK for me is Tyson Fury. Right, like, yeah, I agree. You can, forget, uh, you can forget anybody else at the moment. I'm not buying into the hype of Joshua. I'm not being harsh, but I just think, I think it's been built up to be something that is not in my opinion. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just think Fury is just a few levels above him, mate. Just a few levels above him. Um, I think the casual market, especially obviously, you know, you've got a lot of boxing channels now. Obviously, I watch various ones, you know what I mean? I dab into the little ones and that, the bigger ones. And obviously, you look at them, a few of them, like, they just sort of like, they hype them so much. And I think obviously the media hype them so much. And obviously, we've been defeated with Ruiz and obviously events it, but I think he should have made a massive statement with, with the Ruiz second. I think, I don't think he did. Obviously, he got his belts back, he done his job, fair play to him. Um, but I feel like he needed to make a statement. 
Do you think a lot of people don't know that he's a ability? Yeah, yeah, good good point that big Viv, good point. Do you think that Joshua and yeah. Eddie Hearn went out to Saudi, sold the arse off it and stunk the place out, stunk the desert out? His, pick his pocket, pick his pocket. I think he went over there and he pinched them belts without engaging. For smashing people. But like Joshua, obviously when he first came on the scene, obviously he was knocking people out, wasn't he? When yeah, he oh yeah. Run. Yeah. So obviously people people know him for that, you know what I mean? So for him to go over there and sort of do that, especially when the Saudis are paying so much money for for him to come over, I just think yeah, they stop the place out big time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with that, but I don't think the Saudis were impressed with Joshua because if they were impressed, why didn't they bid for Joshua Pulev? Why are they only saying they'll only put Fury Joshua on in Saudi, in, in Saudi now? They don't want Pulev, they don't want Ilenius against Joshua, they'll only put Joshua against Fury, so they can't have been that happy, can they? Moving on then, uh, do you see boxing going back to the dark days after COVID-19? Um, Without big arenas and stuff like that, Big Viv, I mean. Without big arenas, do you see it going back to small halls and stuff like that, you know, back to the dark days, leisure centres and stuff like that, after this honeymoon period that we've just had for the last, you know, five years? No, 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 no I don't. The reason being is because, like, like I said earlier, the boxing is more against really casual these days. And I think Eddie Earn and obviously other promoters, I'll just do what they want now, in terms of fans, the hardcores want to see 50 50 fights, don't we? We want to see 50 50 fights. Yeah. But I don't think we're going to get that when obviously things go back to normal. I think most of the people that go to boxing these days, obviously they just want a night out. Um, they just want to see one, you know, get a bit of drink down, uh, do whatever they, they have to do um, in terms of, you know, having a good time. Um, so I think when all this is over, I just think people just want a night out, mate. I just don't think it's about the boxing. I think people just generally want to have a piss up, you know, and just get smashed. Um, so I don't see boxing going back to dark, dark ages, no. I, I see boxing still maintaining its model uh, financially um, because people will pay for anything these days, you know? 
Interesting, interesting. All right then. Uh, what's your favourite fight that you've ever seen on TV or live? That's difficult. Um, <laughs> I have to say it's probably, for me, Fraser and Ali, I'd say. Um, all, those, all those fights are just epic, man. Probably Fraser and Ali? Yeah. That's, yeah. That's for me because because of what was sort of the build up to it. it just, I don't know, just, just, just the feeling of it, man. It was just like, like, even when you watch it these days, you sucked into it. You know what I mean? You just sucked into it, man. Um, also, I like the Frosch and Gross fight, believe it or not. A lot of people are going to probably give me stick for it, but I like the Frosch and Gross fight. That, for me, was a really good fight as well. Yeah, I was there for that, mate, ringside. You like that one, yeah? The first one. Oh, mate, yeah, man. He's, he's class, man. Class fight. Oh, my God. He was, you literally, you were just, I don't know, watching it, you're shaking. You know what I mean? It's like, especially like the first one to six, it's like it's crazy. They um, went at it like cat and dog, didn't they? Still do. <laughs> Yeah, I think that a lot of fighters, after they've fought, I think a lot of the hate and that leaves each other, they tend to give them a bit of respect, don't they? But if yeah, it, yeah, I get, I get from that point of view, like, you know, showing the room, going having rounds, bashing each other up, I get that, but I think there's too much of, I don't know, how can I put it? It's a bit like Hay and Bell, you, perfect example. I just think that was a total con job. Yeah, alright then, moving on then. Uh, uh, do you... Do you think that boxing has a PED problem and what is the solution? I think boxing definitely has a TED problem. Um, if you look across the board, um, not many of the top fights actually get busted for it, mate, you know? Because I think there's too much uh, to lose in terms of finances um, in the industry itself. Um, yeah, I just think it's really bad, especially with the top people. I mean, like, if you look at, I don't know, obviously I'm not going to but like, you know, if you look at, like, boxing, some of their physiques, especially, like, the heavyweights, um, how some of them have not been busted, I do not know. Um, it just seems to me, if you've got lots of financial backing behind you, it seems to me that you can in bars and all those things other, other testing companies that don't really touch the fighters. And if they have obviously got a bit of, Yeah, he's um, our, he was our fighter, Liam. I think that was really harsh. Whereas, you know, someone like, I don't know, maybe Fury or whoever, obviously, or, you know, obviously, or White or whatever, they haven't really sort of, you know, obviously, I think they've been catching up, but they didn't get as many years. So, like I said, I think it all depends on finances and how big your name is. And, but I think there needs to be a 50 60 level plan deal, man. Because I think it, at the moment it's unfair. So what you're saying then, uh, Big V, is that the the fighters who are a certain like a Commonwealth level who get done, they don't uh, they don't get. Sorry, can you hear me? So what you're saying then, Big V, is fighters that are at a level, say a Commonwealth level, stroke British, who get who get done for recreational drugs or PEDs, they get hammered with four year bans. And the pay-per-view stars who have two and three charges get two-year bans. Yeah, Gillian White's had a two-year ban, and he's had another charge 
uh, his second time and he got swept under the carpet even though he peed in the same cup and he got put into an A sample test tube and a B, B sample test tube because I've seen these tests, I've even seen them signed, I've seen what goes on. So you have, you have, you pee in a cup and then it goes into two tubes, doesn't it, right? So an A sample and a B sample, they test one, they test the other. Yeah. Why don't they test them both at once? and put them in a safe in front of people, in front of the promoters and in front of the other opponent. Why can't the opponents see the tests? Why can't they? Why can't we get authorities involved? Why can't the board of control do something so it's all filmed and it's all transparent? Instead we've got, we're waiting for Dillian's B sample. B sample comes back as negative, but yet the A sample, which is at the same cup, is positive. So can uh, am I a lollipop or something? Am I a sausage? Or uh, am I seeing things differently here? Mate, you're talking, you're talking, it's, it's true though, mate. It, it should be, like you said, it should be more transparent. And unfortunately it's not, I don't think. That's, that's got to come from the top, mate, you know? They've got to, you know, sort of make a stand and, and make it fair, mate. Like, for example, when you talk about Dylan White, also don't want to hammer the guy. Um, so actually, like, he's a fighter and stuff. But obviously, you know, with the white and rivers, obviously, was didn't he have a substance in his body when he was fighting rivers? Did he do it on the wrong or? Well, obviously, he did, didn't he? Because it came up as yeah. on his A sample, didn't it? And they never, they, they didn't disclose it to rivers. But that's the thing, mate. And obviously, what would what would have happened though if there was a bad injury towards rivers? What would have happened if he killed the guy? What would happen if he'd have died? What would have happened with the B sample? It's a murder inquiry, then, isn't it? Exactly, mate. Well, Eddie Hearn uh, didn't know about it, but he didn't want to disclose it, did he? So what does that make him? An accessory to a possible attempt murder? Is that what it is? Because these people are hitting people in the ring. Tony Bellew keeps going on about they're hitting people in the ring and they're taking drugs now. So what does that make Eddie Hearn an accessory to GBH? Because you're getting punched in the head like a 30 pound mallet. Whack, whack, whack. Like a cricket bat in a, in a, a cricket ball, that's 30, 40 pounds. So what's the difference? What's the difference? You're getting punched in the head by people taking drugs, but yet it all got swept away. Where were Tony Bellew coming out speaking about that? The man that wants to string drug cheats up. It all went quiet, but now the B samples come back and that's negative. It's all disappeared. <laughs> when it suits them, you know, for example, they're not going to obviously start preaching about this when, like you said, Dylan White with Matt Truman to the play, he's not going to do it, is he? No, they're not going to bite the hand that feeds them, are they? Exactly, mate. Whereas when General Bill out with Joshua, when he came out and obviously had about four or five different substances, there was all shape from the rooftop saying, oh, you know, it should, it should be vampirised and all this kind of nonsense. At the end of the day, people should be taking drugs, that's obviously the facts, everybody knows that, but at the end of the day, like you said, they're not going to bite. about women's boxing. Keep talking. I've just got to get. I've got. I've got to put a shirt on because I've got a meeting in a bit. Uh, go on. Go on. You were saying. So what? So what? You don't rate women's boxing at the moment, then? Is it because it's two minute rounds? Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing, mate. I just. I, I, are they actually putting money into women's boxing or not? Uh, 
Baby? I think I should put in nine money or like funds into all this boxing. What I mean by that is are they actually like um are these women actually making a decent living off boxing at the moment? I don't, I don't know if they're investing much in women's boxing. I know we've got a world champion from Doncaster, Terry Harper, so that's good. She's got two belts. But uh, yeah. I personally don't think that they're going to let them have pay-per-view or, or anything like that. No, no, no. No chance. No chance, mate. Because, like you said, the, the boxing audience is mainly casuals, you know? Yeah. They're not going to believe that. I'm sorry. They're not going to believe women's boxing. You know? Don't get me wrong, you know, I believe men and women are you know, equal, you know, 50 50 or 100% on not. On not. You see, my argument with women's boxing is this: there's no British title belts for them, so the, so the only belts they can go for are uh, interims and world title belts. So the world champions within, you know, within within ten fights, it's like they're gifted it, isn't it? But they 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 can only beat who's in front of them, and they've got to, they've got to make the best start and a bad job, I suppose, haven't they? Exactly, mate. Exactly. You only can do your best. That's the thing, mate. And I mean, like you said, after ten fights, you you know, you're pretty much. No. Sort of like fighting, knock over job, knock over, knock over job, then they might find a mandatory and then they get a world title, depending on who the, who's backing them. Like, say, um, I don't know, Julian White, like you, you, you keep saying on your channel, he hasn't won a, you know, he hasn't won a European title yet. No, he hasn't. He's contention for a world title. Yeah. So, I think that Dillian White uh, is just going to pick up pay-per-view money uh, fighting guys that are top 15, isn't he? You know, in world. He's not going for the killers, is he? You don't see him crawl out Dubois, Joyce, Usek, any of them. Usek's in the same stable as him and he never mentions his name. Floyd Mayweather as a boxer, or did you rate him as a boxer? 15 or retired? I did, yeah. Um, to be honest with you, yeah, obviously, you know, technically, at this well, defensively, effectively, he wasn't the most, he, he wasn't the most exciting fighter to watch, though. To be honest with you, and if you're if you're if you're a casual boxing fan, yeah, 12 rounds of Floyd Mayweather, you're not really going to appreciate the, the sweet science of boxing, are you? No. Yeah, alright then. Uh, 
Who do you think is best trainer in the UK at the moment, uh, Big V? Oh, best trainer in the UK? That's a, best trainer that's a hard in the UK. One, because that's the thing, most of the, most of the trainers that are training sort of top fighters, they've all achieved something, like for example, Peter Fury with Tyson, um, obviously he still needs to, um, you know, do, do like things with Fury, but obviously like I said, Fury's a work in progress, isn't he? 25 year old, Huey. Oh, sorry, mate. You is 25 year old. That's the thing, mate. He's got time, and he's, he's got time in it. He's got time to, he's got time to, you know, go for it. But I think with Yuri, I think I'd like to see Yuri like do like, um, you know, go in, go in with like fighters like I don't know. Obviously, I might be wrong here, but maybe like fighters at like say maybe European level, sort of like build himself up again, build, 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 and then actually go for like mandatory challenges and the world, the world again. Um, yeah, I, I like Yuri. I think he's a good fighter, man. Good. Yeah. Um, what, who, who impresses me though is just Warrington's trainer, his dad. I like him. Yeah. Um, just because he's been there from the start. Um, Shout out Nick yeah. Manners, who's part of Josh Warrington's team. I hope you're all right, Nick. I watched two seconds. Uh, I watched the Tony Boo fight with Nick Manners, and I thought you won, Nick Manners. All right. Sorry, Tony. But go on back to your question about trainers. Yeah, okay. Uh, so you're going to pick Sean, o Sean O'Hagan as your best trainer in the UK at the moment, yeah? Okay. Yeah. Uh, who's best UK born guy to not win a world title? Whoa. Best UK born guy? Yeah. Um, Who's Henry Cooper's best win? Oh, I'm sorry. Who's Henry Cooper's best win? I think it's the, I think it's the uh, the opponents that he fought though, Ross. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm going on to, in terms of you know not to win the world title because he he fought everyone, didn't he? Like he was in an era, he was in an era where everyone was fighting each other. Yeah. Um, yeah. He wasn't picking and choosing who they wanted to fight. Pride was on the line. You know yeah. these sort of fighters were willing to. You know, guy in the ring. Obviously, I know it's a, it's a bit extreme. Obviously, what I'm saying, but they want that that sort of mentality. Um, you could say Craw also Crawford, Crawford Ashley. It's a good show. Yes. Yeah. I think if he was around today, he would be a world champion. Yeah, he would. Yeah, Crawford Ashley would be a world champion. Bomber Graham. But, yeah, Bomber Graham. Um, Luke Campbell. Also, Luke Campbell. Yeah. Luke Campbell. Luke Campbell's never won a world title yet, has he? From Hull. Gold medal Olympian. Uh, moving on then. Uh, so yeah, we've spoke about Crawford last. So you, you, you said you rated him, didn't you? Who's your favourite boxing pundit on TV at the moment? Yeah. Um, and I like how sort of Glenn just sort of said it how it was, man. So I think at the moment, I think there's too many people that are not speaking the 
You've just, you've just lowered the boom. <laughs> Andrea, leave him. <laughs> right then. Uh, do you, uh, you, you throw me with that big vip. <laughs> you throw me with that curveball. Bean, Jesus. Run a bean, could have been, should have been, never been. Bake bean, creepy bean. Right, uh, does Daniel Dubois win a world title with Martin Bowers? Yes. Yeah. 100%. Uh, I, think, I, think when, I think when Fury gets out of the game, I think, yeah, I think he definitely wins. I think as long as Fury's around, I can't see him. I just find it, I just find it hard to see anybody um, sort of, you know, Oh, Martin Bowers, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I do, I do. And you don't see Martin Bowers do interviews, do you? Like Mark Tibbs, they don't put themselves about every two minutes, do they? They're from different stock, aren't they? Well, they're, all, they're all score, aren't they, mate? They're all yeah. score. They're not a bad sort of fame and getting get themselves out there yeah. and being on TV. And they just go about the business, don't they? They just, yeah. just sort of do their work, man. Yeah, all right then. Uh, do you think Eddie Earl will retire if Joshua retires? Do I think Eddie Earl will retire when Joshua retires? Mm, I think he will, I think... I think he's going to stay, I think he'll stay on, mate. Yeah. Because, when you, when you think about it though, he's built an empire now. Yeah. Um, and he won't want to let it go. And he'll just stay in there just to sort of like, piss everybody off. Tweak it. Uh, Stay in there just to tweak it every now and then. Yeah, exactly. I think obviously he's going he's to find, he's, he's going to want to find another sort of gem, like he did with Joshua in terms of yeah. um, money. Um, but I think if he doesn't sort of find someone like that, I think he would retire. I think he will retire. Yeah. Right. It depends on like, in, the, in the day, mate. It depends on the money, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, cause obviously, at the moment, at the moment, he's making a million a week. Did you say, was it a million a week? Four forty five point four million he made last year, that's nine hundred grand a week. Well, that's that's what I'm saying, mate, and I think a lot of that is probably to do with the fact that he's got AJ, you know? Um yeah. but I think as soon as he goes, when he obviously hits forty, because obviously AJ wants to be a billionaire, doesn't he? So I think when once obviously AJ reaches that target, uh and obviously I think Kenny will stay around for maybe a couple of years, but then after that I think he might sort of yeah, leave, I think. Alright. Moving on then, will Bob Arum live to be 100? <laughs> the Bob Father. <laughs> well, mate, to be honest with you, you look, you look well, don't they? Um, still, his, his health's still there. Won't, won't surprise me at all. Uh, lives a good life. You know, rich man. Keeps himself young. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think he'll live to be 100. Um, you are. How old is Bob Arum at the moment? He's about 90, isn't he, Bob Arum? So he's probably got about another eight years to reach 100, so yeah. Yeah, he's definitely got another eight years to reach 100. Yeah, he's got another eight years to reach 100. Yeah, he's got another eight years to reach 100. Yeah, he's got another eight years to reach 100. Yeah, he's got another eight years to reach 100. Yeah, he's got another eight years to reach 100. Yeah, he's got another eight years to reach 100. Yeah, he's got another eight years to reach 100. Yeah, he's got another eight years to reach 100. Yeah, he's got another eight years to reach 100. Yeah, he's got another eight years to reach 100. Yeah, he's got
did Richard Steele stop the Meldrick Taylor Julio Cesar Savage fight too too early? Well, sorry, I rephrase that. The fight had two seconds left. Did you agree with Richard Steele stopping the fight with two seconds left? Considering the guy was stood up and and Chavez was twelve foot away from him and Steele were in the middle, two seconds to go. Did Richard Steele stop that fight too early? Um, what do you think? Yeah, yeah, Julio, yeah. Julio Cesar Chavez against Meldrick Taylor. Hmm. I'd have to say probably, very possibly, there's a possibility. Well, two seconds left and the man stood up, right? With two seconds to go, they stopped the clock, didn't they? So, and it's a Don King referee, one in Richard Steele on a Don King show. What do you think? He looked to his right because somebody uh, come into his vision and he looked at them, yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, ah, uh, I think the referee, ah, uh, I think the referee was right to stop it. What, with two seconds to go? It depends, it depends how you look at it, because if, for example, you're a referee, uh, it depends how, mate, because like, if you're a referee, then obviously the referee's obviously responsibility is to the safety of the fighter. Wouldn't the referee, wouldn't the referee have been better to let him go out on his shield? Possibly. Yeah. After all the punishment that they both took? Possibly mate, but like you said, you don't, I, I mean... The two, there's two ways to look at it though, isn't there us? There's two ways to look at it I suppose, no? Mm, well, before the fight, Lou Duva said that they felt that Richard Steele were going to shaft them the first chance they got. That was before the fight, and obviously with two seconds to go, I personally think that Meldrick Taylor was shafted. The only people who don't agree with me are Mexicans. Well, do you think it was, do you think it was, um, like, rigged, not rigged, but do you think there was a bit of, you know, sort of, stuff going on there? Well, of course there was, yeah, they never had the rematch straight after, they had it down the line when Taylor had mileage on the clock, but personally, I think that, Meldrick Taylor was shafted, and it, and it, and, it, and how Meldrick Taylor's ended up is uh, leaves a bad taste in my mouth because he's been discarded by boxing, and you know he, he uh, gave his all, and I just think that cases like that tend to bother me a lot. I have a problem with it. I just wish I could pull up a few million and give him a drink out of it. I just I just yeah. feel for him really, and that, that I just feel for him at all. Is he, is, he, is he all right now in terms of obviously he's living a good life and that now? Or is pardon? He, pardon? He's living a good life now. <laughs> no, no, he, no, no, he ain't. No, he ain't. No, he's in a bad way. Bloody hell, man. Yeah, so. Do yeah. Uh, okay, then, moving on. Uh, did you rate Lloyd Unigan's win over Donald Curry? Yeah, oh my god, man. That fight was incredible. Yeah. Like, yeah. Obviously, yeah. you know, British common, Commonwealth European champion. Well, when yeah. Lloyd, yeah, Lloyd Dunigan beat the best pound for pound welterweight in the world. Now, Kel Brook beat Sean Porter. Porter weren't the best pound for pound in the world, but Kel Brook went on to fight Triple G at 160 pound. Now, back up a little bit. The main guy when Lloyd Hunnigan was the world champion, when he had all the belts at welterweight, was. Lloyd Hunnigan, but the main guy at 160 was Marvin Hagler. What would the fans have thought if we put Lloyd Hunnigan, who you say were better than Kel Brook, wouldn't you? What would we think if we put Lloyd Hunnigan in with Marvin Hagler? Would the fans have kicked off? Of course they would, wouldn't they? Possibility, isn't it? I mean, Possibility? I mean, come on. <laughs> mate, come on. Like, at the end of the day, mate, like you said, boxing, now, it's, sort of, it's different, isn't it? Now? That's the thing. It's... Um... Okay then, Marvin Hagler against Lloyd Unigan, 147 against 160. Kel Brook, 147, and he's no Lloyd Unigan against no. Triple G. Come on. Yeah. Did Triple G ruin Kel Brook's career? Yeah. 
So would Marvin Agler have ruined Lloyd Unigan? Would we put Canelo at 160 and with Paul Malignaggi, what would we say then? Well, you'd probably say you're mad, wouldn't you? Well, why would we not say that Kel Brook and Glofkin's mad then? Why did we all say Kel's a beast? Why would you not say Paul Malignaggi's a beast? He's a 147 fighter, Kel's a 147 fighter. Why is it okay to put Kel Brook in with Triple G, but not Paul Malignaggi or Manny Pacquiao? Would Floyd Mayweather get in with Triple G? Well, there you go. So, why did Kel Brook? Who's advising these people? Well, this is the thing. Like Fighters are not superheroes, Viv. Uh, v, Big V. Right. This is the this is the problem. That's that's what you've got in boxing now. Like, I thought that was an absolute disgrace putting Kel Brook in with Golovkin. But I'm, I'm, I'm like, who who thinks that? To be honest with you, Triple E could have killed him. Yeah. Like, Yeah. No, no, good point, then good point. Errol Spence has got a better KO ratio than Golovkin. Best interests at heart, they haven't, have yeah. they? Yeah. It's, oh. it's, it's, it's shameful, it's shameful, man. Yeah. It gets me, it gets me mad. Uh, do you think Adam Smith at Sky Sports gets a lot of unfair criticism on social media? Thank you very much, we'll have you on again, how's about that? Thanks man, Appreciate Thank you for coming on Big V, you've been a good sport and you get your hardcore badge, you've passed the test. <laughs> What other channels do you like? Um, big shout out to Ultra Tech Sports. Ultra Tech Sports Raw, he's alright, I mean, I like him. Yeah, he's a, he's a good, you know his stuff, man. Uh, UCTV, I think he's good as well. Yeah, UCTV, um, we give him a big thumbs up. And Ultra Tech. Yeah, man, big up, big up to UCTV. Boxing um, Asylum. Yeah, another one. Um, yeah, man, I think there's, there's, there's a few out there, mate, that I like. And 
you're all doing good stuff, man. I just, I just wish there was a lot more like you guys around. Because yeah. Being, well, not many people, you see, have got uh, big gohoners like us lot. That's the problem, yeah. you see. A lot of people, they, they want to work with people down the line, whereas me, I'm not really bothered. No, I'm, all, I'm, I'm, I'm fortunate, aren't I? But uh, there's a lot of people that they, they, they whisper things and say things behind the to the mates and that, but they're not going to say yeah. it on a, on social media because they all want to get to the big pot of gold, so they don't want to upset the boats. They all don't want to rock the boat. They're, those people are weak. I know promoters out there at the moment that they want to say this and they want to say that, but they don't. So. But I'm not a promoter, so I don't have that problem. But I you never know. The thing, is, the thing is, though, mate, it's like, you know, you've got to be, like I said, you can be, you can have your own opinion, though, surely, can't you? You know what yeah, I mean? Like, yeah, you can, yeah, yeah, you, you know, can. You can be slightly, sort of, say how it is. I mean, obviously, don't get me wrong, obviously, if you're working with someone, you're not going to keep bashing them in, are you? Because obviously, they're not going to work with you again. But well, I work with Dennis Stone, I'm not where I'm mean, terrorising. <laughs> <laughs> I terrorise him, <laughs> but I've got his back, but I terrorise him, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, he, and he knows that, but he, he, he just laughs, but he, he's a nice man, no, no ruffles his feathers, but you know, I keep poking him, don't I? I keep poking him with a stick, but uh, Dennis, Dennis will mend it, change his ways soon, and uh, he'll come round to my way of thinking. <laughs> Sonny Edwards, Tommy Frank, I mean, if that's bubbling, it must have gone off now or been burnt on the stove. I mean, come on. But the, but the thing is, that is, mate, I think, I think Dan's got to be careful with that a little bit because obviously, like you said, it's obviously timing and it's marinating the fight, but yeah. at the moment, the public are interested in it, aren't they? You know what I mean? Yeah, but why, yeah. Okay. why would Dennis want to hope that Sonny Edwards gets a few miles on clock when he's two years younger than Tommy Frank? I, I don't get that. I don't get it. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, like you said, it's, it's like you say, sometimes it can be overcooked, can't it? But like you said, I think, yeah. It's got to happen. Sonny Edwards against Tommy Franks got to happen sooner or later. Tommy's got to grow a pair and his trainer and Dennis have got to grow some nuts. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. you want to see some of the emails I get. I want it. And I dare say Sonny wants it. Tommy will do what these paymasters say maybe Tommy wants it who knows but Tommy Frank's blocked me hasn't he now on WhatsApp the thing, is, the thing is though mate obviously as a fighter you need to take charge of your career you know what I mean you can't have you can't have people sort of dictating who you're going to fight for I get it they can sort of lead you the way they can show you the path and it's up to you if you want to take it or not yeah. but you've got to have a say in your career haven't you listen so to me mate Edwards, just, yeah. tell, just tell the team tell listen. Glenn tell yeah Dennis say, yeah. I want to fight I want to fight him do you know when a fight do not happen, right? That is the fight. Do you know the fighter, right? The fighter employs the manager, he employs the trainer, he employs the promoter. If he's not happy yeah. with them and he's a boxing board of control fighter, affiliated or licensed, you go to them and you complain. If Tommy Frank wanted to fight Sonny Edwards, he could go down to Jezel Street in Sheffield, press the buzzer, Michelle would buzz him upstairs and he could say, Dennis, I want to fight Sonny Frank. Make it happen. If Dennis went, eh, well, you know, uh, we're going to get it down line, build it up and all that, I'd butt in and say, look, you're a pair of flyweights. You're not going to be pay-per-view. It's not going to sell out Wembley. Get at it and fight and be men. Instead of hiding behind people's skirts, that's what they need to do. And Andy Aylin or whoever's dealing with Sonny Edwards, Frank Warren, Queensby lot, they'd make that fight in a heartbeat and put it on PT Sport. So I don't know what Dennis is messing about, Art, but it pissed me off. Obviously, we had a words. We've had several serious fallouts over it over the last 18 months. They need to fight. It's overcooked. 50 50 fights have got to happen now. That fight's a 55 45 fight. It's got to happen. Sonny's a favourite, 
Tommy's got the style to beat him if he can implement, implement a game plan, but it's got to happen. We can't keep hiding behind skirts. And saying, well, Porky Russ, I'll do what Dennis and Steve Crump say and Glynn. Grow a pair of balls, Tommy Frank, and I don't give a hoot that you blocked me on WhatsApp. The fans know you bottled it. Grow a pair, get down to that office and demand that fight. Mate, I can't, uh, I agree with you, mate. And the thing, the thing is, like, mate, like you said, it's about, at the moment, the interest is there. It's a 55, 45, 45, by whatever it is. Get it, make it happen, man. And yeah. I think Tommy, Tommy now has got to take charge of his career. He's got to be like, Dad, babe, I want to fight him. Simple as. Um, yeah, like I said, man, I think there's too much that that is boxing where people are picking and choosing who they want to fight. But they don't want to pick the hard fights because... You know, I don't know whatever reason financially or, you know, I, I, just, don't, I just don't understand it, but I just don't understand the mentality. And yeah. What, as, when you was, when you was like, say, when these fighters were younger, right, what, what was their reasons for being professional boxers? To fight. Reason? To fight people. Exactly. It wasn't to sort of avoid people, was it? It wasn't to, you know, pick easy fights and to, like, you know. But these days, like you say, people think about it, you know, it's a business, isn't it? I think that's the, that's what fighters' mentalities are now. It's yeah. The businessman, the businessman. So obviously, yeah, I don't know about it. Boxing, it's a weird game, man. But it's one of them sports here that you just can't. Yeah, it just gets you going, doesn't it? <laughs> gets the juices flowing, doesn't it? All right then, mate. Well, listen, thanks for coming on, Big V. All the best to you and your family, and have a safe journey back up north when you go back up. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Alright, right. you take care mate. Cheers. You too. Take bye. care. Bye. 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 Right, bye. Well that was uh, Big V from the uh, I think he's down Wolverhampton somewhere, down that end or Midlands or somewhere. Might even know Dale Nichols, he's hardcore. Uh, thanks for coming on. I thought he spoke really, 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 really well. And of course, I've just timed it right. So I'm off now into Sheffield for a meeting. So peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep supporting boxing. Shout out to Charlie P. Happy birthday yesterday. Uh, hope you're well. Uh, that's about it, really. Peace out. You like that one, didn't you? Right, first of all, I just want to say thank you very much for liking and subscribing. It means a lot to me. Because uh, we're on this journey together, aren't we? So, anybody got any ideas for the channel, fire them over to me. PorkyCorner at mail.com. Alright? Shout out to Innovation Alloys and South Yorkshire Packaging. Alright? Don't forget to subscribe, keep on trucking. <laughs>